Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Sprout. So, we're picking back up shortly after the last episode. I have done a couple of small things. Uh, first up, I upgraded the warehouse to level 2, just because, you know, we had the resources. I did have to get some gray carpet, so I had to go out and kill a bit of squids, but um, you'll notice it added the additional chests on these ends here. Um... So I did do that. Also, I leveled the town center up to a level 2. And if we take a look in here, this one actually wasn't as bad. Um, we are getting to the point where we have to use a bit of spruce. Um, so, first, I had, I had enough spruce to finish out the town center. But the warehouse, I actually had to go out and find spruce. And, yeah, that took me on a little bit of a journey. <laughs> and then over here, uh, this is the house. If you... In case you missed it, I had a, a small little bit right after I said goodbye last episode. And I was working on this house, and I actually killed a zombie, and he dropped some uh, damaged leather boots. So we actually got kind of lucky there, but um, I'm actually using a different house style for this house. Um, this is a level 2 version, so it can support two villagers, but it's the standard wooden instead of the alternative wooden. Because I'm thinking that the, the houses out here... Um, more on the outskirts of town and around like the farms and I've got uh, one actually if you look right here on the map you can see right there I have one that I've, I've planted but I haven't actually built it yet um, it's gonna be near the fisherman huts and so I'm thinking the houses on the outskirts here should be like the smaller um, almost like little apartment style houses and then the ones closer to the center of town or like in specific like scenic spots should be these houses. These ones look a little bit more like well-off, well-to-do houses um, than these little apartment ones. So I figure we'll use a mix. We'll also probably maybe use some stone buildings here and there, but the primary building um, component of this town is going to be wood. Plus I think the wood stuff looks a whole lot better than the, uh, than the stone stuff. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead and get into what we're going to be doing. We're going to start off by doing a little bit more mine colony stuff. There, I want to get the delivery men, the bakers, and a guard. At least one guard set up. And then we'll probably switch gears and do something a little bit different for the back half of the episode. So anyways, I've got these leather boots. Um, oh, by the way, and a little bit later in the episode, we're going to check this out. To find spruce, I actually, actually took off. I was looking for spruce. And, uh, by the way, we have a bunch of Slayer's Guilds through here. And I think there's, like, another one right there. And, yeah, there's Slayer's Guilds all over the place. Um, but I actually set out across the desert, and I came across another town. This one is a lot bigger. I haven't actually thoroughly explored it, um, because I figured I'd wait and explore it with you guys. But, uh, I did get the Waystone, so we can easily teleport back there. Um, so anyways, we've got our leather boots. Let's go ahead, and I'd like to actually maybe get some better tools this episode as well, because I've kind of been putting that off. Um, where's my anvil? There it is. Okay. This is the one from inside the dungeon, of course. I don't know... Okay, these are craftable, though. We'll go ahead and set that down. Let's get ourselves just a little bit of leather here, and I should be able to repair these, I assume. Yeah, it's going to cost me three levels, three pieces of leather. That's fine. Okay, so now we can finally, finally get our delivery man hut. So let's get a uh, little bit of oak wood, and there we go, delivery man. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Um, also, something to note, I did drop the scarecrow, because I was I was having issues getting her to farm, and when I, when I placed it on that block, she started farming, right? Well, then she, then she just stopped farming, okay? So then I dropped the Scarecrow back down, and now she's actually acting like she should. Um, she's actually breaking wheat. If we take a look in here, I don't know what she's got in her inventory right now, but in here, um, yeah, there's two and a half stacks of wheat right there. So she is acting properly with the Scarecrow dropped down a level. So just a heads up on that. I haven't posted the... The previous video yet but i figure you guys will probably comment and, t and let me know like oh hey you need to do this you're doing it wrong but uh i did uh fix that so i was just kind of testing more than anything all right so delivery man um let's go ahead and actually let me 
let's get an idea of what the building looks like first. And then we'll figure out kind of where we want to put it and, and all that. Right there is that where that house is going to be for the fisherman huts a little bit later on. Um, Alright, so sandstone, delivery man. It's a very uh, relatively small building, I guess. There's these tracks here. I don't know. I don't plan on having tracks. <laughs> uh, we've also got a mesa. This one's got tracks too. I mean, I guess we could use this as a minecart connection, but uh, wooden. Okay, it looks like wooden does not have the tracks. Okay, so wooden actually is not terribly large. It's not too crazy. It's more just like a little, almost like a little house, you know, um, where the delivery man's gonna call home. So let's just set it up. Um, Actually, I was originally planning on putting it into this area here, but it's it's a really tight squeeze. It would fit. It just doesn't fit and look good, so we're not going to put it there. Um, I was thinking it was actually a little bit smaller than it actually is, but uh, let's see. There's actually going to be stairs that come down right there. And so what I might do, because I kind of want this first one near the warehouse. You know, they're going to be pretty much operating hand in hand. And we've got this nice little place right back here. Which there is something I can put up there that'll look good um, a little bit later on. So I'm not too concerned with that. And I'll tell you what, we're going to have it right here, I think. Um, and there'll still be plenty of room on this side. Because keep in mind, this is actually going to get raised a little bit. And the road's probably going to extend a little bit more to, the, to this direction. Um, if we end up expanding it. I don't know. Um, I like these smaller roads. I don't want anything too big because, I mean, even at level 5, this isn't like a super industrial, super high population. So the, the smaller roads make more sense than having like a 4 wide or something like that. Um, so I'm thinking like 2 and then 3 wide in certain places that are high traffic. Um, this area here is probably going to end up being a 3 wide road, I think, because it is a high traffic road. Um, whereas the ones, for example, in like the lumber area, uh, these are too wide. You know, they're mainly just for the lumberjacks to move around through. Um, so I think right there is going to be good. And that way it's kind of close to the, uh, the warehouse. And then, you know, I might end up putting one on the opposite side. I don't know for sure. Um, hello. No! Why oh, you gotta catch me on fire? Fire is the bane of my existence. It's not so bad. Alright. Um, but anyways, we're gonna go ahead and lock that in. And let's have her start building this. And let's see what we're going to need to finish it out. It's not super big, honestly, as a tier 1. Um, it's mainly a bunch of oak and a little bit of dirt. That she doesn't have because I actually pulled all the dirt out. That's my fault. Um, I do know that she's going to need a new shovel. So I'm going to have to set her up with one of those. I think we brought some back. Uh, yeah. Efficiency 2. Yeah, we'll give her these. Alright, so oakwood planks. There you go. And now we just need 47 oakwood stairs. So that's no problem. There's 56. Throw that in there. There's the dirt. Actually, she had gotten the dirt from digging, looks like. Oh, will you not use enchanted? Uh, aha, she will not use enchanted yet. I think, I'm not for sure. But I'm assuming that eventually she can, maybe. Um, maybe once we upgrade this. Which I'm, I'll probably upgrade this at the end of the episode, because it's nothing too crazy. You know, I won't have to cover any information or anything involving that. It's pretty much just pretty straightforward. Why is there so many mobs, like, right here? There's got to be some kind of a cave system or something underneath where we're at. Has to be. Because there is, like, mobs for days under the floor. Either that or they just keep spawning and kind of building up in this area. I don't know uh, for sure. Okay, now she is off and she's building. 
And while she's doing that, let's go ahead and grab our next thing that we're going to make. We have three villagers right now. Um, you know, there's the one in the house right there, and then there's two in the house that's over there. Um, and actually, I want that guy to be a guard. So let's go ahead. Um, we're going to go ahead and make a guard tower. This just takes a bow. Right. And we actually get two guard towers for a single craft, so that's awesome. Um, that, and then we're going to need just some sticks, or some planks, I mean. There we go, two guard towers. And I think this first one, we're actually going to set up um, kind of over here. And basically these guards, of course, are going to protect the area, protect our people, and we can actually set them to patrol routes. So we can have them patrolling around different sections of the town, or we can set them to guard specific sections. Um, you know, just whatever, basically whatever our needs are for them. Alright, so first up, there's the sandstone one. If we take a look at the level 5, oh, wow, that's huge. I really want to build a desert-based town. There's the Mesa Tower. And then lastly, there is the wooden tower. I actually like that tower a lot. That looks really, really cool. Okay, the level one, though, is this dinky little outpost-looking <laughs> tower. So, let's go ahead, and we're going to have to find a place to put it here. And I'm actually going to have it kind of next to the mine and these houses here. Because I feel like the if we're going to defend anything right now, it needs to be the industrial quarter of the base. Let's go ahead and rotate this. I think this is the entrance. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and push it back a little bit. This is actually going to take a lot of stone. Like a lot. Well, oh no, never mind. I'm, I'm just looking at the level 5. I was thinking I switched it to level 1. But I think right there should be good, and this is actually... Uh, level, I don't know if I want to raise it up by one, maybe. I have it sitting right there. And she just finished the delivery man building. See, it takes me forever to figure out placement. And I think what we're going to do is we're actually going to have this, um, i tell you what, we're going to move it over one, back by one. I think I can do that. Yes, it'll be right on the edge. And let's raise it one more. And it'll make sense, I promise, like, once everything's done. Now, I will say, possibly at level 1, it might be kind of dinky looking. Um, when does it get the good base? Level 2, it'll be okay. Level 3, 4, 5, okay. Because basically I'm thinking about having steps going up to it, um, and kind of like a, like a tiered ridge that goes around it. And just have it kind of elevated above everything. Because it is a guard tower. You know, they need good line of sight. I don't want these buildings to obstruct the view at all. Even once they're a little bit taller than this. Um, and I want it to kind of look, you know, impressive. Like, you got this big raised building there and everything. So, we'll set it up right there. We're going to go ahead and tell her, start building this. And, let's see. She is missing basically just a bunch of oak. Um, oak wood, oak slabs, oak stairs and some ladders. And somebody probably got hired as the delivery man. We're going to go over that in just a second, you know, in case you guys aren't familiar with the delivery man and stuff and how uh, all that system works, basically. All right, she's got everything that she needs to finish out the guard tower. All right, so I'm assuming that this person is off doing work right now. May have already brought some stuff back. I don't know. It doesn't look like he's brought anything back. Um, basically, the what the way the delivery men in the warehouse works. Of course, there's nobody that actually mans the warehouse, right? Whenever delivery men bring stuff back, um, they will... Let me actually grab like some saplings as well. Because I'm going to want to sort all this stuff, more or less. 
Uh, just throw that in there. The delivery man will come get it. Um, I'm going to want all this stuff sorted. And the delivery man, whenever they bring stuff back, they will actually sort the items. And what they do is they kind of go around to all the buildings and check the inventories. And they take anything that uh, isn't needed by that profession. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put wood right in this chest. And then we're going to put uh, saplings, I think, in this chest. Let's see. Let's see if we can find our delivery man. Let's see. Let's go ahead and recall him. Okay, now he's got his backpack. I think it just took him a second to actually get with the program. Alright. So basically, if we follow him for a second, he's headed... I don't know where he's going. Unless he's going for that house. Because they do do this stuff at random. So, yeah, I bet that's where he's going is this house. Because it, technically it has an inventory. He's going to check it. He's going to say, okay, there's nothing in there. He's going to go on about his business. Um, and he's going to head for the next building, basically. And it's really, it's random. You know, he doesn't detect, like, oh, this building doesn't have anything. Um, he's just going to head for one. And the level of the delivery man house is going to affect... Um, how many items that he can carry. So, like, right now, he's not going to be able to carry much. I think it's, like, maybe, like, two two item things, like, two slots in his uh, inventory that he can actually carry. Is he going to go for the lumber? No, he's not going to go for the lumber. Where's he going now? Oh, he's going into the mine. So, if we take a look here, yeah, he grabbed, okay, just one stack of items. So, we're definitely going to want to get him upgraded ASAP, because one stack is... Pitiful. Absolutely pitiful. Um, go ahead and upgrade that. But anyways, what he's going to do is he's going to take this cobblestone now. And he's just going to drop it off right there. And now he's already off. Looks like he's going to that house over there now. But anyways, if you look in here, it's not in this inventory. In the warehouse inventory. It should be in the first available chest. And I want to say, does it start... Okay, this was the first available chest right here. I think it goes left side, then right side or something. Like front to back. Oh, he's back. Did you actually... Oh, no, he just took that cobblestone. Because I'm assuming that somebody needs cobblestone. Oh, you know what it is? It's her. That's another... He's already demonstrating that. Yeah, see, she needs cobblestone. So what he's doing, he just brought all that cobblestone over and... Gave it to her. Okay, so that she could work on upgrading that building. So what he's going to do is he's going to pick up any items that he finds in any of these inventories that's not needed by that person. And he's going to take it to the warehouse and drop it off. And then anything that they request, like whenever it pops up and says, like, for example, right here, I need an axe of maximum grade of iron. Um, if I was to make an axe real quick. Alright, so for example, I just made an axe. I'm going to drop it into here. And here in a minute, we should see Sebastian come back. He's on his way. I don't know if he picked up anything. Did you pick up anything, buddy? No. He generally is going to prioritize getting people stuff that they need over picking things up. Okay, but you'll see he goes over to that chest. Now he's got that iron axe. And he's taking it to one of our woodcutters. And he's going to give it to them. So that they can start cutting again. Probably Ruth B. Barber. No. Oh, he's taking it to Allison. H. Krabon. And he's going to put it in the inventory for that. Uh, for this. Which she is all kinds of stuck at the moment. Okay. But you'll see she has her axe out and she's, you know, she's back to work. So he can deliver those items for us. So that we don't have to... You know, as long as we keep him stocked on those things, then they're not going to bother us anymore for stuff. You know, he's going to take care of it for us. Um, now, bear in mind that he's only going to use stuff that's in the warehouse, so he's not going to, like, come over to my, you know, my little camp that's set up over here. He's not going to come over here and grab materials. So it's going to have to be in the warehouse, and it's going to have to be one of the, uh, basically the original chests. 
Okay, I'm gonna I tell you what, I'm gonna set out just really, really quick, and I have to go find some spruce. What in the world? Why is there a polar bear here? Huh. Just randomly, way out here. I mean, if I can just get a spruce sapling, we'll be set. It's just I've never... You know, I found that spruce wood in the villages, but that was about it. There we go. We now have spruce saplings. So I'll probably plant some of those in the town for the um, lumberjacks to get. Aha! Found one! It's actually kind of curious since we were out here, usually around the mountains, there's a lot of these. That's generally where I, find to, I tend to find them. What did we get? Uh, heist 1. Awesome. So if I get a little bit more XP, we'll have Heist 4. That's just going to be crazy. Okay, I did get a little bit sidetracked. I'm running around uh, looking for ability totems. Um, and since we're here, I am going to... We've got a toolsmith. Fishing rod with unbreaking 2 for 7 emeralds. And then he's also got a gilded hammer. DPS of 9. Pumpkin pie. There's cooked chicken, apples, pork chops, and that. My inventory is terrible. Who is this guy? The guard. 9 iron for an emerald. And he sells a breastplate. 13 pumpkins for an emerald. Emerald for 3 pumpkin pies. Oh, and there's another tool. There's a toolsmith right here. Efficiency 2 pickaxe. There's a lot of people in this little outpost place thing. Whatever it is. And, of course, I'm going to take their hay. And, you know what, I'm going to take their beds, too, just because it saves me from having to make red beds later. I'm terrible. What is that? That doesn't look daunting at all. Okay, so what is this thing? It's floating. It's like a big evil tower in the sky. It's like my uh, base on Craft of the Titans or something. By the way, we will end up exploring that like evil looking tower. Just not yet. Because I didn't bring, I mean, I didn't bring torches or anything like that with me. What is this? What in the world is this thing? Oh my god. I did not bring torches with me though. Like I just I kinda just kept on running and I was looking for ability totems. Oh man. Okay, do we wanna go up here? Let's go up here and just like have a peek inside. We are going to have to, like, come through this area and, like, really explore this at some point. Oh, man. It's like a leap of faith. Uh. Okay, no. We're not going in there just yet. We'll come back. Um... A little bit lighter when I have torches and maybe a little bit better armor. I mean, granted, I could just dig through the wall, but that kind of takes all the fun out of it, I think. So we're not going to do that. We're going to come back with torches and we're going to dive into that deep hole or that dark hole and just see what happens, I guess. <laughs> um, I mean, I got the spruce that I needed. Let me, let me actually mark this. We'll say temple. That is cool looking. That is so cool looking. Uh -huh. What's this? There's so many cool structures in this pack. Like, and you guys, I found I found one in creative mode. I'm still, I haven't managed. I haven't managed to find it. You know, in this world thus far. But once we do, like, it's amazing. I promise. It is absolutely amazing. There's another roguelike dungeon. There's some kind of, like... Oh, it's just a big 
Whoa! Whoa! I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna mine that without looting, though. Um... I'm just gonna mark it as ore vein. I guess. Um... Okay, what is this structure here? This is a some kind of ruined tower. Okay, at the top it's just a nice vantage point, I guess, of the surrounding area. Okay, there's another ability totem. There are dragon's nests everywhere. Like, I want to take one on at some point. Like, not yet, though. Okay, what did we get? Step assist one. Alright. I'll tell you what, I'm going to refund those, and then I'm going to apply these ones. Like, step assist goes up to level 3, and I now have all three of the step assists that I need to max that skill out. And then, you know, after that point, after I get skills maxed, then all those points, all those things, are just, we're just going to sell them to the archaeologist. Well, there's some kind of a structure up here. And then we're probably going to head back, because I'm almost out of food. I, I got all that food, but... Oh, what is this? Oh, okay, we're going down in this one. Oh, there's a Slayer's Guild. That's perfect, because then I can get a Waystone from here, so... Um, yeah. This is really cool, because it's like double staircases going down. Uh-huh. This is like an old abandoned mine. It's all like glowstoned out and stuff. Oh, there's a chest. It's not trapped either. A uh, speed book and a golden apple. Some of these areas are like really dark though. Oh, there's another chest right over here. Yeah, it's like a maze. Uh, I don't have space for all this stuff. But yeah, it's like a mine slash maze with treasure chests in it. And I mean, right now there's not really much of anything spawning through here. And if you take a look at the map, like look at this, there's something over there too. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, we're going to have to come back to this because I don't have any torches. It's hard for me to go in the darkness, you know, without any kind of light source. I love this frost on the sword. So good. What is this? Okay, now this is just some kind of weird structure, it looks like. There's another Slayer's Guild over there. There's Slayer's Guilds all over the place. Okay, but I want this ability totem, and then we're going to head back. It is a jump boost totem. Hey. So we are up to... Two of five on jump boost right now. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm going to head over to the Slayer's Guild and get a waypoint. Because there's actually a lot of really cool stuff in this area. This general vicinity. So I do want a way to get back here pretty quickly. Oh, actually right there's the monks. So we've just come around in a big circle around this. And actually I already have this waypoint. I do believe. Hell. Oh, these guys don't attack me on sight anymore. Welcome to the guild. Oh, they don't attack me. Welcome to the guild. Hell. I like that banner. Draconic Smith. Why do you presume to be worthy of my services? None of the other members see you as an equal, so why should I? So is there maybe somebody here that gives me a quest? 
Because I know in the patch notes, uh, like, it's fixed, but I think you have to, like, get to a certain point, maybe on citizen rep or something like that, before you can, um, actually do their quests. So, okay, but we're going to head on back. Uh, Waystone of Origins. There we go. And there you go. There's your steps. So now she can go finish that building off. Um, which, of course, is going to make our delivery man be able to carry more items, do stuff a little bit quicker, you know. Um, now, the next thing that I want to do is I want to get a bakery. Um, oh, yeah, we need to do the guard, right? So let's take care of the guard. Um, first up in here, you can actually set... Like right here, you can set if you want a ranger or a melee person. Um, I'm going to leave her as a ranger, I think. Um, assign the guard, find patrol target. And we're going to set it to manual. Try to retrieve on low health. I think it's supposed to be retreat. And we're going to say on. And... We're going to set her to patrol, and we're going to set her patrol pos positions. Um, so we're going to say here is basically where she's going to start at. No, I'm sorry. Okay, let's do this again. I'm going to say start like right here, and then I'm going to want her to come to like right here, and then to here here I'm too far away from the guard tower now and then to here and then she's gonna go back to like right in here okay and there we go now we just need to supply her with a bow and you don't have to give her arrows Basically, depending on the level of the guard tower, I didn't realize that it affected how far they can patrol, but it does, um, you know, from the guard tower, but it also affects, like, how many arrows they can shoot. And then once they shoot, you know, however many arrows they're able to based on the rank of the tower, then they have to head back to the tower and restock on arrows, and then they can go back out. So, there you go. There's your bow. So now she's going to start patrolling that, um... Uh, she's not really worried about the left side. Actually, that side might have been the one that was just too far for her to do it. Okay, but it looks like our delivery man house is upgraded. It is awesome. And I tell you what, while we're working on the next, setting up the next building, I'm going to go ahead and have her upgrading this guard tower, make it a little bit better. And to do that, we're going to need some buttons, some oak fences, and some oak fence gates. Not a problem. Okay, she's got everything that she's going to need to upgrade the building. Let me go ahead and give him, because he keeps complaining about fences. He needs fences. Can he use a gilded pickaxe? I don't know. We're going to give it to him. Hopefully he can use it. I don't know for sure. Wait a second. What are you doing? Why is, was there two Sebastians? There's two Sebastian J. Atleys. What is this? What is this madness? Is this some kind of witchcraft? <laughs> is that what happens? Like... There's two of them and it's kind of creepy. And actually, I want to look and say, I guess it just, does it really just duplicate the person? Yeah, see, there's cobblestone there, bird's nests, which I'll have to go through this and kind of sort it and make it a little bit better. Because, I mean, like, torch, I don't want that in there, really. Um, birch wood, you'll notice it goes with the oak wood. Look at all that oak wood we've got. There's slabs being filled into that one. Apples, sticks. Stone, roots, wheat, 
truffles and fluffy puff seeds. Okay. Now they're going to have to start like dumping things in with other things and stuff like that. But um, once we go in there and we actually get it sorted, which I'll do that between episodes, but uh, it'll be a bit better. It'll be quite a bit better. Okay, so the next thing that I want to make and the last building that I want to make today um, is the bakery because I want to fix all this like food problem that we've got. I think I can handle that. Oh, they got the guard tower level two. This just takes some wheat and some sticks. And this is going to fix the whole, like, I'm hungry, give me food, all that stuff. Um, because as it stands right now, we have plenty of wheat. It's just I'm not crafting bread with it. You know, I'm not doing all that. That's too much trouble. So what we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves a bakery. Awesome. And I think this bakery, I want this kind of like... Uh, I don't know. Let's see what we're working with here. Um, no, I don't want a guard tower. I want a bakery. This is the level one bakery. It's just a furnace. It's terrible. Oh, wait. Yeah, it's still just a furnace. That's all it is. Okay. But if we look at, say, the level two... When does it get the uh, the top part? Oh, maybe it's just not displaying it. There's supposed to be a windmill blade at the top. So I think it actually gets it at level two. It looks like. Um, but this is the full-sized wooden bakery. Um, and I am going to show you the, let's see, the stone one, I actually do, I don't really like this one all that much. Um, just because the other ones are so much better, and this one is kind of just bland. Um, like a little baking shop or something. But, the Mesa one I'm also not that crazy about. Um, but it does get the windmill front, which is cool. I believe. I believe that's a windmill that goes up there. But... The sandstone one's actually really cool. This one, honestly, as far as design goes, this one's my favorite. This one and the wooden one both, because the wooden one has the windmill, which is really cool, but I love those, like, turnstile, like, the vertical, I guess they're windmills, you know. I've seen them on, uh, like, those sandstyle buildings, and they're, like, vertical turnstile type things. But we are going to go, of course, with the wooden one. And... This is this one's a tough one because I want this to be like at the heart of the town. That's the actual front of it. Can I tell you what? Our very first bakery is actually going to go right there, um, and the reason being, well, there's a couple of reasons. First up, um, the placement actually works very very well. Because you'll be able to see it, you know. And, it, and we're starting to kind of spread towards this direction. And then, of course, down there, there's going to be, like, fishermen and stuff like that. Also, if I'm standing, like, at my house. <laughs> look at this guy. He's just he's just hanging out up here. He's like, well, this is my house now. Um, but I'll be able to see the windmill. Which, I love windmills. You know, that's, like, one of my favorite things. And um, I do want to be able to see that from my house. And then what's going to happen is the road's going to kind of come up and then go right up along there and kind of wrap around, you know, and there's going to be different buildings and stuff like that. And there'll also be some stuff off in there. Um, so I think it, right there is going to be the perfect spot for that first bakery. I think I will like that quite a bit. Because it's like a bakery, but it's also a meal at the same time, so... And I don't know if I want it, like, flush with the ground. I feel like no. Yeah, I tell you what, we're gonna, we're actually gonna raise it by one. I do believe. Yeah, right there. And we'll go ahead and set her to build this building. Okay. 
And we'll see what all she needs. Honestly, the first tier is super cheap. It's like just cobblestone furnace. <laughs> like a little bit of wood. Like it's it's such a dinky looking little building. It's great. Um, yeah. Mainly we're going to need cobblestone, cobblestone stairs, dirt, furnace, oak fence. Okay. Let me get all these things. And I'm assuming that guy up there, the random like <laughs> mounted man up there is going to be our baker. All right. I'm going to have to get a golden lasso and clean up some of these animals, like, just wandering around. Okay, I tell you what, while we're waiting, I'm going to set up, because we haven't actually, so far, we have not made any drawers. Uh, we've pretty much been, like, nothing but mine colonies, and pretty soon we're going to be kind of... I mean, we're not going to, like, leave mine colonies, but we're going to be doing some additional things because we're getting to where, after, honestly, once the baker set up, we'll be in a very good spot with mine colonies. Um, and I know everybody, like, right now, they're starving and they're hungry and all this terrible, terrible things, but not much longer. All right, I'm going to put... Um, by the way, you can actually change things and add things and stuff like that to these buildings if you want. Um, for right now, I'm going to put some drawers, like right here and right here. And kind of what I'd like to do is grab, like, a bit of this oak wood. We'll leave, like, a few, uh, maybe like a stack in there in case they need it. Um, also, like, saplings. I'm going to go ahead and grab just all the saplings. We're going to throw those into a drawer. Um, cobblestone. We're going to make a drawer for that. Wheat, I'm going to leave alone. I'd rather leave wheat because it's going to be going to the bakers. Just so that way we can store things that are like, you know, that we're going to have a lot of wood. We're going to have a lot of cobblestone. A lot of seeds and saplings. And these... These chests are going to fill up. Now, later on, we will automate this whole place so that stuff gets pulled out, gets dumped into, but, like, a bigger sorting system. And I think the guard tower, for right now, I'm just going to do it out of cobblestone. And then I'll, as we upgrade it, you know, I'll upgrade it. Okay, looks like the baker is now done. The baker has been completed. Okay, let's pop over there, because I am going to want to upgrade the baker, um, so it'll run a little bit quicker and all that stuff. There is our baker. <laughs> he grew chops for the job, I think. Okay, um, can you not... Uh, th see, these things, they cannot figure out at all. Okay, he needs wheat, so a delivery man should bring him wheat here in just a moment. And we're going to go ahead and upgrade the building. I'm not sure what that requires. Yes, you head on over there and start getting things. Um, but basically what's going to happen is the delivery man will bring him wheat. Then he's going to take the wheat and he's going to transform it into bread for us. And I will say that I have heard that they're working on a crafter. Like if you look in here, um, there's a quarry and there's a forge. Which is interesting. Um, I'm not for sure what the quarry will be. It's probably just maybe like a super mine. I don't know for sure. Um, the forge, though, I can only assume that it'll be smelting materials. Like smelting uh, ore and stuff that's pulled up. Which is going to be very nice. He should be. Yep, he's running right now. So you'll notice he's like smacking this like wheat onto that, uh, that table. And basically... That's going to create bread for us. He's actually really slow at level 1. <laughs> Alright, let me... Uh, I'm going to go get her fences made. I've almost got everything made for the tier 2, though. She's bringing all the stuff over right now. It looks like he's finished... Yeah. You can see this furnace is turned on. That means basically it's making bread. It doesn't actually have to have... Um, you don't have to feed it coal. Like, it just runs on its own, basically. Um, and he's gone back to making more wheat. 
or more more bread. So this is now loaded as well. There she goes. She's a building. She's a building. And that bread should be done. He'll probably go pull it out in just a second. It takes him a while. At a, at a rank one, it's so slow. It takes him forever to make a piece of bread. Okay, I believe she's got the last of the stuff to finish this out. At long last. It actually look. I think this building actually looks pretty good at level two. It's not too bad. But we now have a, a tier two, a level two guard tower. I'm going to have to make more guard towers, you know, because that one guard only is really protecting this little area. Um, I could actually probably increase her patrol route, I imagine. So now she should be patrolling a different route entirely. Yeah, so you'll see now she's now she's coming over to here, making sure the, the little houses are okay. And then she's headed back over here. Then she's going to walk around the lumber mill, make sure nobody's trying to loot the lumber mill or anything. I need to go get something for her to fight so you can see it. Oh, look, he finished a piece of bread. <laughs> At long, long last, he's done with a piece of bread. I'm sneaking right now. Sneaking backwards. Oh, he's actually a hardened zombie. Too. Yeah, see? She's starting to fire arrows at him. Oh. Don't knock him into me. She's shooting arrows all over the place. And I believe <laughs> her accuracy is so bad. Did, that didn't give her any experience. Because I think because she didn't get the killing blow. I'm going to have to help her out because if I recall, like, getting her leveled up is going to affect her accuracy. <laughs> right now, her accuracy is so bad. Like, she managed to hit, like, one or two shots and that was it. But the nice thing is, even though the, the bakery is not running all that fast, I mean, I'll need more bakeries. You know, as the town grows and stuff. But right now, that one baker will probably feed this town once everything's up and going because they don't eat a whole lot of food, honestly. So, that'll be okay. Um, let's go ahead and upgrade the builder's hut as well. Oh, man. We need... Oh, my God! <laughs> Acacia, black wool, bricks, brown wool, coarse dirt, dark oak, glass panes. I mean, it's mostly like one or two pieces of all this, like, it's like dinky little amounts of stuff. There's some polished andesite, diorite, granite. Ugh. A bit of spruce, though. So I'm going to get all the stuff that she needs to upgrade this, and uh, I'll be back in just a moment. I'll tell you what's bad is having to go hunting for andesite. Like, that's one thing. I've never found any andesite. I found granite and diorite. I found a lot of granite and a bit of diorite. Sometimes I know, like, these can have things. I could have got my polished granite right there. I mean, as of right now, I'm only missing... I need two pieces of diorite. I'm only missing the andesite. Um, just get four pieces of that and I'm set. Oh, he's got... How did he get polished andesite? I didn't think you could find polished andesite underground. Oh, he's found some kind of a dungeon down here. I have to say. Uh, oh, I wonder what happens if he finds a chest. The only thing is, I'm pretty sure that's the roguelike dungeon, but it looks like he's blocked it off, I think. <laughs> I don't know, because he's down to Y level 30 right now. Okay. There's the polished andesite. 
So now she can finish out that, this building, and she'll actually move through it pretty quickly since it's right here. All of her stuff is right here next to her. Um, and we'll finally have our very first Tier 3 building. And then, of course, we'll be able to make more Tier 3s because we've got a Tier 3. And here we go. Where did she put the glass panes at? I don't even see them. Oh, there she goes. There she goes. And you can see, like, she has different colors of wool that she offers and, um, you know, different planks that she offers and different types of stone and different types of wood. That's one thing I love about the builder is, you know, it, it makes sense. Like, there's all this, like, materials outside. There we go. Finished building. Haha. <laughs> it's not too crazy right now, but it's getting there. I like whenever stuff starts to get the spruce wood and the oak wood and the... Um, oak planks and spruce planks and all these different types, these different colors, instead of just being very monotone looking, um, you end up with stuff that actually looks pretty good after that point. Okay, it's actually been just a little bit since the last bit of recording. Um, first up, our guard died. <laughs> she went off like chasing something and um, ended up getting killed. So we got this guy, and I actually have him set up as a knight. I did give him a little bit of armor. That we kind of had lying around and this sword because uh, he can't use enchanted swords right now um, also we have an uncommon tempered blade we were using that basic one so i went ahead and switched over um, chances are it's probably going to be temporary because um, i have plans for next episode i know this episode i was planning on gearing up this episode but um, I, I did a bit of editing with the footage while i was watching some videos on silent gems and I realized we're getting close to wrapping up points. So, um, I do want to say, though, that I'm really enjoying this kind of like Dark Age type start to the playthrough. Instead of going straight for power, straight for ore doubling, you know, we're kind of taking a bit more time. And, and I mean, granted, we have like wood production and, and mining and all kinds of stuff up and going. Um, a couple things I want to show you, though, before we... Um, I want to go check out that village this episode and do some stuff that we're going to need next episode. Kind of in preparation for next episode. Um, but if you notice down here in the mine, he started making some little wings to the mine. Um, but then I upgraded it and now he's going he's going farther down. Um, I upgraded a few buildings to rank 3. The mine is one of them. I'm sure you noticed there was like a coal block hanging over um, the mine shaft. So right up here, you'll notice it's it's a little bit different. There's some more furnaces and some green carpet and stuff. Um, also, this house is up, upgraded, so now we have an extra villager. Um, that's a tier 3 house of that style. And then over here, the delivery man is now a tier 3, and there's three of them running around. I don't know if it's supposed to duplicate them, but it is. So I have three of the same guy running around the town right now. Um... Which, that, that building really hasn't changed much on the interior. It did add this, which actually looks pretty cool. It's like a kitchen counter type thing, and that little bed and stuff. Um, which, it's funny because he has a bed, but it doesn't give you, like, an extra NPC house. <laughs> so, I guess he can just take a nap there. Um, also, the warehouse is updated. And it was weird because in the list of things that we needed to upgrade the building, it did not list any item frames. But she needed like a stack, or I'm not, I'm sorry, not a stack, but over half a stack of item frames. So I had to go out and kill cows. And actually the cows have bulls, and the bulls will attack you if you attack the bulls. So just a heads up. Um, but you'll notice upstairs we have this nice little area that's been added. Uh, and this is the tier 3 warehouse. So it was, it was semi-expensive, but not anything too crazy for us. Also, I noticed there was right over here, all that time I spent looking for polished andesite, there's a bunch right here. So, GG me. Um, also, the bakery is up to a tier 3. And by the way, he's producing enough bread right now that I can eat the bread too, and the village has bread, and everybody's happy. So, um, But I did upgrade those to tier 3s. And it, for the most part, it was all pretty standard stuff um, for that. Now, what I want to do before we end out the episode is next episode, my goal is we're going to first focus our time on gearing up and then we're going to go out and explore. Okay, so I think we're going to try tackling maybe that big temple that we saw. At least try going into that. <laughs> I'm kind of nervous about it. 
Um, but it would be interesting to uh, to dive into that. Also, all of these are now equipped at the moment, so just a heads up. Um, but there's a couple things that I want to do, and first up, I want to... Actually, where is... I've got the needle and string here. And I want to grab this wool, and if we craft these together... Oh, is it only white wool? Let's see. And I don't want to use my string. I could use my string to make wool, but I don't want to, honestly. Because I need string for making things like bows and whatnot. So I'm just going to go shear a few sheep here real quick. And actually where we're going, I think there's a few sheep in that area as well. So we may not need to shear too many. This step assist is so nice, by the way. Oh, those are... Ugh. I hate all these flowers. By the way, there's actually a flower. I'll show it to you because it's down here. Is that white? That's white. Yeah, okay. Um, there's a flower right down here. These um, fade leaves, they will actually teleport you down, like under the ground. So just a heads up on that. Um, I actually ran into one of those and they teleported me under the ground and I was like suffocating. I didn't die. I broke myself out, but um, just wanted to bring that to your attention. Just be aware of those. Okay, so we got nine wool. That should be fine. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a few pieces. Oh, we have to like keep putting this back. That's kind of a nuisance, honestly, but that's okay. Okay, so we got nine pieces of cloth. And what we're going to do is let's grab this. And by the way, I had this armor because I was seeing if villagers, aside from guards, could wear armor, but they don't seem to wear it. So, um, right here, this Waystone of Populous. This takes us to this village. The one that I found since the last episode. And there's like these uh, pergola walls. And sometimes grapes grow on these, but... And I don't know, is there any... Okay, there's no real use for grapes, so we can just eat them if we want to. I'm going to grab a few of them. Um, it's actually about to be night time. And then, of course, we got one of those Man of Smith golems um, here. Um, let's see, what do we have? There should be a cloth person. Um, there's actually immersive engineering. It's just copper. We've got... Aluminum rods, iron rods. I am going to throw some of this, like, junk armor in here. Because I don't want to necessarily get rid of it. Because I might be able to use it for some of my villagers. But I also don't want to be packing it around. Okay, there's the person I'm looking for. Basically, what we can do is we can come into here. Welcome to my store, stranger. Do you need help with anything? Not really. Okay, so we're going to sell cloth to them. And let's see, a single piece of cloth gets us eight bronze coins. Okay, I want as many of those as I can get. But really, like, she only buys cloth. And then to get any of the rest of this stuff, we're going to have to, uh, let's see, mana wave... Oh, you need six mana weave and 24 iron coins. You can get a mana weave robe, scrap bag. Iron coins, that's actually fairly expensive, I think. Um, what do we have in here? We got, oh, that's arc furnace, blueprints. I was hoping for, which I, I, didn't, I didn't think to empty my backpack out before I came. I should have, but um, I was thinking that maybe... There'd be some blueprints for this guy. And I think, he, yeah, he's got all the same trades here. Oh, there's pure daisy, but we need pure daisy blueprints and an iron coin for that. And, of course, we're going to have to get that to start Batania. And those are only scavenged, by the way. There is no crafting recipe in this pack for pure daisies. <laughs> so, I would like to get maybe two of them. What is this building here? Okay, this is a bank. Banker and teller. Um, 
Let's see, the teller, we can trade 64 bronze coins for one iron coin. So let's go ahead, we'll downsize, get two iron coins, one bronze coin. You can turn iron coins back into bronze. 64 iron makes a gold. 64 gold makes a diamond. 64 diamond makes an emerald. Okay. And then the banker, I guess we can actually store money into this. And then if we wanted to, we could upgrade. What happens if we upgrade? Well, okay. You just throw all my money on the ground, but thank you. And we can actually unlock additional tabs, too. And I think we can store... What? Oh, I'm starving. Um, we can store items in that, too. So that is interesting. I'll tell you what, though. I don't really want to store my money here right now. Um, because I want to find a blacksmith, maybe. Possibly. Oh, what is that? kind of tower. Next episode, we're going to be doing a lot of exploration, scavenging type stuff. Promise. Uh, what do you have? Probably the same stuff. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like iron armor is 24 iron coins. That's so expensive. Uh, gold is also 24, and black quartz is 24. There's also diamond, emerald, obsidian. Uh, there's inori. Void armor. Then there's steel armor, tactical armor, mundane armor. Oh. Armor frames. That's what... Yeah, see, I was wanting to get this stuff. To make this armor. Like, some of this... Yeah, that's going to be expensive. Okay. We're not going to be able to go straight into that, I don't think. Unless we can, like, rob the bank somehow or something. What's down here? Okay, last time he had some diamonds in his house. Oh, we've got black quartz and we have... Oh! Mundane armor frame grab bag. We'll take that. Uh, and you can have that in return. And I'm going to take that gold too. Okay, so if I open up this grab bag, what do we have in this? boots and then these <laughs> we can make flint boots with point fifty two armor oh that's terrible that's terrible because that's all that they can make i'll tell you what i'm not wearing any boots at the moment so and that is the only use for these things so guess what we're getting some flint boots what is this i guess it's just some kind of big ruined bridge. Oh no, it's like a... Well, there's nothing really in here, though. I think we've done everything over there that we need to do. But basically, I was thinking that we could earn some money to buy some armor, but that stuff's so expensive. I'll tell you what, though. Let me run over here to the archaeologist. I don't know what he pays for... and, like, what these guys pay. Oh, if you get far from Grimoire of Gaia, you get an iron coin. Rabbit hides are cheap. Uh, white fur is cheap. Brown fur is cheap. Brown fur is a half coin piece, though. Okay, the archaeologist pays two iron coins for each ability totem. It's not really great, but uh, it's not terrible, I guess. If we come across an ability totem that we don't need anymore, then we'll bring it to him. And I think that's the main places that we have at the moment to make money. Tell you what, let me um, unequip all of these real quick. We have six more skill points, and we are going to put these... I'm going to put them into mining, actually, because I just want to bum rush through mining, because we get that ore double chance... And I think right now that would actually be kind of helpful. Um, plus, since we're going to get into silence gems, at least for the equip, like the weapons and stuff, I can't do the armor right now. Um, unless I get some better uh, armor frames. So probably doing the dungeons is probably going to be the best, the best way to do this. I tell you what, though, we don't want our armor to break because 
I don't want to have to make that or try to get that stuff again. Um, one other thing I want to get just really, really quickly before we end out the episode, though, is let me grab, let me throw some of this stuff out. By the way, if you go to upgrade, <laughs> I've got these drawers on me. That reminded me. If you go to upgrade your warehouse, or I guess probably any kind of building, but make sure, like, especially things like drawers that have a lot of items in them, make sure you move them before you upgrade because they'll actually tear out anything that you've added when they go to upgrade. Like, they'll clean it out. And that's what happened was she cleaned out and destroyed my drawers. Um, and she picked up the drawers, but all the items just went all over the ground. So just a heads up, you know, if you're adding stuff to buildings, they will tear it apart <laughs> when they go to upgrade it. Um, but what I want to get is a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And I want to get a golden lasso. Because I'd like to get some animal farms set up, basically some sheep and things like that, just between the episode. Um, nothing too crazy. It does use eight levels, of course. But I would like to have animals moved over into the village. So I'll probably build some animal pens. Honestly, I'll probably make them kind of outside city limits because then I can just build my walls around that area. It'll still feel like part of the city, but it won't affect um, the amount of villagers and stuff that I can have. So um, probably off in that direction, maybe, like behind the houses. Uh, because I would want them on the outskirts of town because nobody wants like smelly animals and stuff you know like farms and things like that right in the heart of the city um, but of course this allows me to just pick up animals and move them freely so actually I'm gonna break this because you'll end up killing yourself for right now I'm just gonna move them into this pen then I'll set up something um, Hopefully by next episode, maybe. I don't want to spend too much time building and doing right now, like I said, uh, because I don't want the difficulty to raise up on me. So, um, but I'll probably set up just some quick little, some really, really quick uh, animal pens type thing, especially for sheep and probably for chickens as well, because I'm assuming that I can make arrows. Okay, yeah, they're just standard craft. Actually, um, what does the upgrade from Silent Gems take for infinite? A lot of... Oh, we can't even craft it. Because I noticed that a lot of those are very expensive. Like, it's going to take a lot of chaos shards, which we don't have. Um, some of those take nether stars, like mending takes nether stars. And <laughs> it's definitely... It definitely fits us back because... You've got to, like, really work your way up, so, and get into scavenging. Man, that full stack of that hay only made two hay bales. But we're up to 11, and actually I think uh, the warehouse has two in there right now, so. I might be able to upgrade the farms. I don't know how, many, how much hay it takes, but. Um, anyways, I know it's wrapping up points, so I am going to end out this episode here. Um, like I said, next episode, when we first start, we are going to look into upgrading weaponry. There's a couple different options um, and routes that we could take. I think we're going to go with Silence Gems, though, um, because they're actually fairly easy to repair and stuff like that. So I think that's going to be our plan of action is Silence Gems. Either that or I was also thinking about the AIOT, the Emeritic one. Or at least the sword. It's a 15.2 DPS. This is a 21 DPS. Uh, so I'm kind of leaning towards that AIOT. And if so, I mean, it's easy to craft. Um, it does take these emeritic crystals. But I've got those blocks from something. I can't remember where we got those. So I don't know. I don't know which route I want to take. Because like these are really good if you upgrade them. Um... This one's really good right out the gate, so I, I don't know. I may make both, and we may get into both of them. I'm not for sure yet. So, I'm going to have to clean this up, otherwise the sheep are just going to, like, jump over the fence. But, yeah, I'll probably do a little bit of upgrading around the town and stuff, but, uh, and add those, uh, like, animal farms and stuff like that in is the main thing I'll probably do between episodes, so. Um, but anyways, I'm going to end it out here. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, as always, be sure to hit that like button. And go ahead and subscribe if you're not already. 
to stay up to date with when new videos and stuff come out. Um, and I hope you guys are enjoying it. Like I said, I mean, I'm having a ton of fun with just the Dark Age aspect. You know, I'm, I'm honestly... I hope you guys don't mind, but I'm in no rush to go straight for RF power and all of that. Because um, then it becomes, in essence, a lot like every other pack, you know. And I like how I've got... I'm like just spade spade like i've been drinking too much coffee but you know I'm, i just don't want to rush straight into that and be like okay well let's build machines and all that though i will say that progression through the machines is going to be a little bit different in this pack uh from what i can tell than standard packs you know but i'm kind of taking my time i'm having a lot of fun with mine colonies and stuff and we're probably going to do some other stuff kind of uh, not really vanilla minecraft but semi vanilla minecrafty and one thing i'm actually curious about okay it's mainly railcraft we've got railcraft in here um we might do some stuff with rail carts as well within this pack i do believe maybe so um because i don't generally have a whole lot of reason to do a lot with railcraft but surprisingly enough because since it's surprising because it's in every single pack except for this one but Ender Chests, Ender Tanks are not in this pack. So, you know. We're going to be transporting items a little bit differently than other packs and stuff. And I think it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. So, because I'm going to try to... I'll use conduits down the road. I'm assuming that they're craftable. Yeah, they're craftable. Um, we'll use conduits down the line, but I don't want to just... I don't want to use conduits like I do in other packs. You know, I want to be, I want to, I, with this series, I kind of want to do things a little bit outside of the box as we progress and do things a little bit differently because I don't want it to end up being like every other playthrough that we do of everything else, you know. So, uh, that's kind of my plan moving forward and we'll kind of just go with that. <laughs> so, um, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope to see you guys next time and we'll get into a bit more exploration and stuff by the way if there's a particular area that we've found so far that you guys have seen um you know that we've discovered and stuff on here that you want me to explore next episode you know let me know and i'll take that into account you know and maybe maybe check that out but uh i know that mayan temple is is really looking interesting to me <laughs> at the moment um as well as maybe working through a little bit more of the roguelike dungeon but um, anyways, we'll see next episode. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, and I will see you guys next time.